Sandra, what do you think about um, the state of the U.S. economy right now? I mean, it's not being very well reflected in U.S. markets as the S&P uh, and the Dow Jones both erased losses yesterday um, for uh, a day before yesterday for the whole of the year. Well, Matt, <coughs> it's certainly pretty well timed, isn't it, for, for the election? But no, we, we are, as I mentioned, we're, we're invested in the U.S. market, but we're eyes wide open to the fact that the U.S. economy is moving into overheat. This is the first time that we have had such fiscal stimulus in an economy that was already at full employment, already had closed its output gap in a lot of industries and estimated to be around positive 2% today. So if, if we see a, a continued uh, um, uh, stimulus onto some of these uh, some some of these over uh, capitalized sectors wages will continue to rise we will go through a a a, a, a natural um, a natural rollover of the cycle that the fed i think is is working towards they will ex extinguish this uh, this growth uh, that is in fact over trend above trend and uh, and certainly far too um, far too much stimulus in an, in an economy that's already at full employment. So we anticipate that the, the U.S. growth will come back probably to around 3% 3, 3 as the CAPEX cycle is still going to push the investment uh, growth phase into next year. How close are we to the end of the cycle then, Sandra? Well, that's a question we've been asking ourselves for nearly two years. Uh, we, are, we are starting to see um, the effect of higher interest rates in the consumer sector in uh, existing home price sales, uh, in prices and sales falling, uh, the affordability is also um, difficult for U.S. Um, households now. So just through the consumer component, we can see the wealth effect feed through into a lower level of uh, consumer spending next year. But as I say on the investment side, I think that uh, we believe that it's still going to be pushed on because CapEx is going around 6 or 7%. So those uh, tax cuts are still having um, quite a, a decent effect on industry, positive effect. Working in a sense against that, um, Sandra, if we look at the dot plot, we can see that the Fed, and if we listen to Richard Clarida today, we can see that the Fed wants to continue raising rates. And we're going to get up to, it looks like from this chart, about 3.5% in 2020. Is this going to be a problem for the U.S. economy, as the president has stated he believes it is? Well, I think you've raised a great point, Matt. Look at, look at where the market is. Uh, the market is not anticipating th th uh, that many hikes. Three, they're only anticipating, in fact, under two rate hikes. And uh, they're not anticipating um, uh, the, um, the neutral rate to be that high. So there is going to be some correction at some point in time with the market realizing that the U.S. economy is in overheat and that we will have uh, you know, further wage inflation and other types of inflation. What about the input uh, uh, costs from uh, tariff prices? That will also start to feed through into inflation uh, as well as well as energy, which we believe is underpinned here. So there are some, um, some still uh, some, mm. some challenges ahead um, for, uh, for U.S. growth, that's for sure. Thank you so much for joining us. Sandra Crowell, a member of the Investment Committee at Calmignac Gestion.